Hey you guys, welcome back to Plan With B. Today I'm going to be walking you through how I print, cut, and punch all of my inserts. So I'm going to be showing you guys using my own inserts from my shop, which is Plan With B LLC on Etsy. But this still applies to any shop that you'd be purchasing from in most cases. So I just want to kind of walk you guys through that because I do give printing instructions, which everybody finds very useful and helpful, but it's always so much easier to see a visual. So I'm going to have this broken up by segments, so there will be timestamps in the description. So if you guys are looking for a particular part, but today we're going to be going through all the tools that are needed, my favorite products that I use, which I will link down below. I'm going to show you guys how to print just like a regular insert as well as printing a dated insert, which has to be in a specific order. I'm going to show you guys how I cut them and then how I hole punch them. So let's jump into it. I want to first start by saying to you guys that every printer is different and every computer system that you're printing from is different. So I highly recommend that you guys use the Adobe Acrobat Reader software to print from. It's free. There's also a paid version, but I use the free version. It works perfect. That's how you guys are going to be seeing things today in the video. I also highly recommend that you always do a practice print before you mass print anything to know exactly how your printer operates, how it shoots the paper out, what direction it's in, what direction it flips, all that stuff, because like I said, every printer is different. So let's jump into it, you guys. First, I'm going to talk about the products that I use, my favorite items, and things that you will want to. So obviously, you're going to need a printer. So I have my big printer sitting right here. This is an HP Envy 4520. Um, it's a printer and a scanner, all that stuff. It does do duplex printing. It'll print double-sided. I actually do not use that feature because for some reason, duplex printing never seems to work with any inserts from anywhere that I ever get. I don't know what it is. I think it's my printer, but I always just manually flip, which is what I'm going to be showing you guys today, which is the most accurate way. In my opinion, it gets the lines the closest. So that's how I'm going to be showing you guys. Um, I just have my planner here, which is A6 size. You're going to need paper, obviously. Use your favorite paper. For reference, today I'm going to be using just a standard 20-pound printer paper. It's letter size paper that I print on. My favorite paper, if I'm using something for like reference inserts or like my monthly calendar, if I want like a thicker paper, I like to use the 28-pound paper for that. That's my favorite. It's a little bit thicker and sturdier and helps hold ink better. But for today, I'm gonna to be using the 20 pound. I also have my paper cutter here, which is very old and you can see very worn down. This is by Fiskars and it's my favorite one. I might get the bigger one. It has like this pull out roller on the side. Um, but yes, I love this paper trimmer. Paper trimmer is a must if you are somebody who's going to be printing your own inserts to get that accuracy. And then, of course, a hole punch. You could use a standard hole punch if you want, but this is my favorite. They're not very expensive. I think this one was around $16 or something. This is by Repesco. And again, I'll link all these products down below. But you guys can see inside here, it actually has different variations. So I print for my A6 is what I'm punching. But they have in here, you can do it for pocket or mini size planners, A6, A5, personal, compact, um, all different sizes. So it's very versatile, especially if you like to switch around with planner sizes or you use multiple planners. So that's the hole punch I'm going to be using. So let's get into printing. I'm going to be showing you guys two different styles of printing. So the first one that I'm going to show you guys is how to print something that you just want to mass print a bunch of inserts for. Please note that when you do print my planner inserts from my shop, you are getting two inserts per page on one side and then two on the back side when you flip to print on the back side. So basically you're getting a planner spread to one side and I'll show you guys what that means in a second. They're printing on letter size paper. The only size that does not do it that way is A5 because A5 you cannot fit two to one sheet unless you're using A4 paper. So on A5 it's a single sheet per letter size paper. So let's get into this. So I'm just gonna pull up here the appointment log. It is important that you guys are opening this in Adobe Acrobat Reader. So when you pull this up, I'm gonna show you guys how to print the appointment log first. So I have it open in the Adobe Acrobat Reader. I use the free version and I'm just gonna go up here to file and to print. When your print settings pop up like this, 
you want to make sure that you have actual size ticked off because if you have anything else, you can see how the box is going to change here. You want actual size. This is going to allow it to print with the crop marks in the exact spot that they have to be. You also want to make sure that your orientation is on auto. This is going to allow it to print exactly as I've designed it. And when it prints, it's going to have two, you can see here, two inserts per page. It's for on letter size paper, and then you can print on the back side as well. They are designed to do duplex printing, which is basically where within the file you have back to back of the same exact insert. So even when I have various different ones in the same file, there's always a double of each one, and that's for duplex printing. Even though I personally do not duplex print, my printer's not good with duplex printing, and there's a lot of printers that are not good at it, but that would be where you, you would select print on both sides of paper, and you would have to know which way that your printer is flipping the page for that. However, I always recommend just doing it manually. It prints the most accurate that way. So when you go to print, you're going to just go to, you can go to pages because I have six in this file. I have different um, inserts within this one file that I'm printing from. So I'm gonna go here and I'm actually gonna put in the page that I want to actually print, which is page three. And that is going to be our, um, appointment log so you can see here it changed to that and then i'm going to put in copies now this is going to be on one side so i'm just going to do two to show you guys but if you wanted to print like 10 of these you can go ahead and print 10 pages whatever you want to do this is going to be for the first side so you have to remember that and then once you've selected all of your options you're going to go right down here and just click print so make sure that when your pages print before you go taking them off you want to see and pay close attention to how they're printing. So mine came up face up, which is what pretty much every printer should be doing. So they're face up and you'll notice that the bottom of what my insert is going to be is here on the left hand side. And then the top up here where the headers are is on the right hand side of my printer. So when I take this out, you want to keep them the exact same way to then go manually print on the back side. So what I'm going to do is open the paper tray. And I'm going to keep these exactly like this. I'm just going to sit them right up here and I'm going to go and open up the paper tray here, pull this out and you want to put them back in the exact same way because when these come up through the printer, at least for my printer, be sure to test your printer, please. When these come up through my printer, they're going to turn and curve and then print on the back side. So I want this side to be up so that it prints on the blank side. So I'm gonna put these back in the exact way that they came out, close this, and I'm gonna print the other side. Now, once that you have printed out all of the one side of the inserts that you want, you're gonna go back and put them back through the printer to do the other side. So when you're going to print on the other side, you're gonna do the exact same thing, file print, make sure all of those same exact check boxes are checked off make sure that you go back and put the correct page and then you also want to put the same amount of copies so that you can do it on the back side of those pages that you put in and then you're just going to click print again so now that they've printed on the back side you will see that if you flip these over it's the exact same direction so that you won't have mix matched inserts you won't go and cut these and suddenly you'll have one upside down on the back side that's a common mistake so you want to make sure that you put those in the exact way they're going to print back out so that they go in the exact direction i'm going to just set these aside for now you guys and i'm going to show you how to print dated and then we'll get into the cutting and punching of these later so now I'm gonna go ahead and print the dated inserts and I'm printing all odd pages first and then on the back side it's going to be the even numbers. And I will show you guys exactly how I do that and how I put the papers back in because it can be a little bit tricky if it's your first time. So now I'm gonna show you how to print doing something that is dated where it has to be in a specific order. So this is a little bit trickier and it's hard to get the hang of, but once you know how to do it, it's really easy. So you're gonna, again, pull it up in the Adobe Acrobat Reader app. So this is a 2022 January through December monthly dated calendar. And when something's dated, it has to be in order. So when you go through this, you'll notice that it's really out of order. Like it goes from January to April here, as you can see, that's because when it's printed, it has to print a very specific way so that you can get the things booklet style. 
So you're going to, for manually doing this, go up to File, Print, and you'll see right here, you can see 1 through 14. There's 14 pages in this file. So the first thing you're going to want to do is select all odd pages. So you're going to do 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Those are the first seven pages within this that you want to do. Make sure you have actual size and auto orientation checked off. Then you're going to go ahead and click print. Once the stack finishes, so this was all the odd pages, which is the first side, you want to take it off in this stack. So what's important to note is that when this printed out, the first page that printed was the very bottom page, which had the little cover picture on it. So when we typed in page one, three, five, seven, and so on, the first page that printed out was page one. It's important to know that when you're printing double-sided and you need a specific item on the backside for dated inserts, the backside to page one is page two. The backside to page three is page four. The backside to page five is page six and so on. So when we put these back through and we go to print the even numbers, we need to make sure that page one is the first page that comes out so that page two is on the backside. So instead of just placing all of these back into the printer like this, you can't do that because they will be backwards. The dates won't match. So what you have to do is reorder them, but you need to keep them in the same direction and face up. So what I do is I take the pile and the page on top, I'll just sit right here on the bottom in the exact same direction that it came out. So once it's done, you have to do one by one, otherwise they will get mixed up. Once you've finished, you should have page one back on the top here like this. So I'm just going to get them in a nice pile. So now again, open up your printer drawer, keep them face up and keep that header on the same side that it printed out to begin with. And now that we've ordered it in the correct order and we have page one on the top, when this gets pulled through for page two, it's gonna go like this and page two is gonna come on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and print all of the even numbers next. Now, once you've printed the first side and you have them back in your printer, you're going to go back to file print and you are going to now select pages and instead of odd numbers, we're gonna do even numbers. So here's the next seven pages here, all the even numbers, and you're gonna make sure actual size and auto is on. And for these, you don't have to select copies because we are doing this in a dated order. So you're not mass printing a bunch of these. Once you have that selected, you're gonna go ahead and click print. Again, as these are printing, just let them sit on the printer and pile up as they're coming off. Once the pile prints back off, you're able to then start cutting. So we are gonna go ahead and get into paper trimming your inserts now. So now that we have everything printed, we're gonna go ahead and now trim. So I'm gonna show you guys first on the appointment logs. These are just something that don't have to be in any particular order because they are the same exact insert back in front. So I'm gonna show you that first. You guys will see that there's crop marks here, which show you where to cut. And a mistake I made for so many years is that I used to just go and trim the entire chunk of paper off. And then my cut marks would be gone because they purposely are not coming into the frame here where you cut onto the insert so that you don't have random little pieces of line on your actual insert. But my good friend Amanda over at Perfectionism Prints actually taught me exactly how to cut with these lines. And I couldn't believe that for like over a decade I've been cutting them the wrong way. So last year she actually taught me this trick. So shout out to her. Be sure you guys go check out her website, which is perfectionsandprints.com. She has amazing inserts. So the trick to cutting these is actually when you place it in to your paper trimmer, make sure that you have it lined up. I always like to make sure that um, I actually look at the insert itself to see where the lines on the insert are falling, that the outside line is straight because if your printer ever gets a little bit wonky, which sometimes mine does, it can kind of skew the bottom a little bit. It like almost shoves the paper out too quick and it prints a little wonky. So because of that, I always like to make sure that the actual contents of the insert are lined up perfectly. So what you wanna do is instead of going and just cutting that off, you want to actually pick this up, place it down so that you're not cutting into the edge of the paper. 
and then you're gonna trim up to the other line and back, lift it up a little bit, bring your cutter back, and you'll see now you have this cut mark, but it doesn't go all the way to the ends. This allows you to actually still see the cut mark to go the other direction. Now, if you accidentally cut this off, you can do what I've done for many, many years. And what I used to do was I used to take a little pen and a ruler and I would make a little tiny dot here right where I knew I had to cut so that when I accidentally cut off all of this, I would know where to start. So if you ever accidentally do that, you can use that trick. So I like to go up the three places. So on each side and the middle, on my inserts, the middle cut lines are extremely faint and small. I do that on purpose so that in case any little bit of it gets left on the insert, like this one is about to, um, you guys don't really see it. So you can see this little tiny, let me bring it closer because you can't see that probably. There is a really tiny line right there next to that cut mark. I didn't get precisely on it. Sometimes you just don't. So because it's so faint and so tiny, it's not really gonna be noticeable on my planner insert. So now you can see I have this cut and then I just like to flip it to get to the other side. You can do several sheets of these at one time. Um, it really depends on how good of a cutter that you have, how sharp the blade is, how fresh the blade is. So I usually do maybe like seven to 10 sheets at once is what mine can usually do. My cutter is actually getting kind of dull. I need to change it, but I haven't changed it in a very long time. So that would be why. Then once you have those cuts going up the sides and the middle, you're going to do the top and the bottom. And for this part, you no longer have to go in the center. You can still do this if you want to, but I just slice right through it at this point because you don't need these cut lines anymore. So just cut like that, pull that off turn it the other way. Make sure if you're doing multiple sheets that you hold on tight so that they stay aligned with each other. Otherwise, you're going to start cutting into the insert. And that's another point I want to just make is that if you are doing that, make sure that you are keeping them aligned because I've already done so many at one time that I didn't realize I had ones that were kind of not aligned and then I cut into the actual insert itself. So then after that, you will have what looks like this. You have your planner inserts and when you fold them like this, now you have nice little planner inserts. And then after that, you take several sheets at one time here. And if you're using just like a single hole punch, you're gonna wanna take another insert that fits your planner to line it up to punch where the holes go. Like I told you guys, this thing is my favorite because it's already aligned to A6 and you can align it to multiple planner sizes. So then I just take my planner inserts and I place them in here, make sure that they are aligned and then squeeze. And now I have perfect hole punches on both sides. And when you're flipping through, you can see they're hole punched perfectly, cut perfectly. Another little trick that I like to do, if it's not something that's gonna be staying in my planner, just for reference, if it's something that I have to keep taking in and out of my planner rings so that I can write on them, instead of opening and closing my planner rings and wearing them out, I like to just cut little tiny slits like this with just any scissor right into the edge here where the hole punches. So then it almost becomes like um, the disc bound planners, like how they have like that slit cut to slide right on the discs. So now you can actually just take your ring planner and I'm just gonna open up to a random spot here. And you can see that instead of me opening up these rings, my paper's falling off, me damaging the rings over time, I'm just going to take this and nicely press it right onto here and I have a new insert right in my planner ready to go. So that's how you cut those. I'm now gonna show you guys how to cut and punch dated inserts because those have to be ordered a little bit differently. So I'm gonna speed through the trimming part because that's the same and I will get to the ordering right after. So for these, because it's a bigger stack, I'm gonna actually split it in half and I'm gonna do half of them and then the other half. Make sure that you guys keep them in order for the easiest way to then go and order them when you're ready to put them in your planner, but I'll show you exactly how you can figure out where they go. Okay, once you have trimmed all of these, I like to put them in order before I go and hole punch them. So what you're first gonna do is start by just putting your stacks next to each other. I kept them in, in the order as I cut them, but the most important thing is that you guys have printed them on the correct side because you can always 
get that order right once it's out and you cut them, but they have to be printed accurately in order to do so. So I'm gonna start with my cover page here. And on the back side of my cover page, you will notice that it goes right into January. And then you're gonna see here is February. You're gonna notice this pattern on the top left side of every single one of these spreads is the month. So you're gonna need the months in order. So then this one, if you flip it over, you're gonna see there's March and then here's April. Make sure that you guys are keeping where the hole punch is going to go all on the same side so that you don't accidentally hole punch into the wrong side and then cut right into this and then it'll be all out of order. You're gonna have to reprint most of it. So April, here's May, here's June, July, August. I keep mine this way because I know that it goes this pile, this pile, this pile, this pile, but if you had them like this, you would just have to kind of fish through to see where the day was. So here's September, October, November, December, and then you'll see this is the back cover, which is the forward planning, and then here's a blank paper. You can use it in your planner if you want to, but the reason this blank sheet is in there is because that's how it gets aligned correctly. So you will have a blank paper at the end. So now if we go through this, and you'll want to do this to check your own after you print them to make sure you printed them right. But when you open it up, you should have all of January and you want to see, does it go in order? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to make sure that if the numbers don't seem to match up when it goes to the next page, something's wrong. You want to make sure that it starts on the correct day and ends on the correct day and that it has the amount of days in that month that it's supposed to for that year. So I like to go through and just check that every single month is set up accurately. And once I know that it is, then I can hole punch. So after that is done and ready, I'm gonna hole punch these. So I only put a few sheets into my hole puncher at one time. So I'm gonna actually split this pile up probably into three to four sections and just take some of these, take my hole puncher, place it in here, make sure it's aligned correctly, punch, sit to the side and just keep it in order more so so that you guys you know don't have to do double the work of putting it back in order and again it all stems from making sure that you printed that correctly when you do print um double-sided and you're manually flipping you need to make sure that on the back side of one is page two on the back side of three is page four on the back side of five is page six and so on so that's why we print all those odd numbers first for this and then on their back sides print all the even numbers but you have to have it in the correct order when you feed it back through the printer so now you can see i have a perfect little calendar here ready to go for 2022 that is all cut punched and ready to go and typically i already have mine printed but i would print this on a little bit heavier paper just because i pack so much information onto my monthly calendars so now you have a data calendar already ready for your planner I hope that this video helped you guys. I hope that you found the visual a little bit more helpful than just the written printing instructions. And like I said, this will work for so many planner shops, so it doesn't have to be my inserts that you guys are purchasing, but anywhere that you're buying planner inserts that are like this, this method is going to work. You just have to get to know your printer and do some practice ones first. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.